experienced teams in television. So to know what's happening, when it happens, join us for Election 97 on ITV. Straight facts. Straight figures. Straight talk. Later tonight, Terry Butcher, Kate Battersby and Lou Macari will be joining Richard Littlejohn for football debate. Do I Not Like That is at 11.15. On Carlton Now, the news. From ITN, News at 10 with Trevor MacDonald. Blair responds tonight to Tory charge of liar. On the move again, lorries stranded by the blockade. Drama at sea, the moment Britannia came a cropper. Liverpool's brave struggle to stay in Europe. And could he be Britain's answer to Tiger Woods? Good evening. The Conservatives launched their most furious and most personal attacks on the Labour leader Tony Blair today. The Prime Minister accused him of deliberate lies, and the Health Secretary Stephen Dorrell accused him of panicking under tough questioning and of telling barefaced, despicable lies. It happened after the Labour leader said the Conservatives would put VAT on food and abolish the basic state pension. We'll be talking to Mr Blair later in this programme, but first, here's our political correspondent, Hugh Pym. A colour-changing image of Tony Blair heralded a personal attack by the Tories unprecedented in a recent election campaign. Stung by the claim that they'd scrapped the state pension, they repeatedly accused him of lying. The tougher the questioning, the more he panics, and the more he panics, the more he lies. Bare-faced, despicable lies. Some would say the campaign has plumbed new depths today by you using such strong language about Mr Blair. Doesn't it suggest uh, pretty desperate straits for you? No, it, express, it expresses anger that this is a man who two months ago called for a serious debate about pensions and now, despite the clear assurance the Prime Minister has given of the value of the basic state retirement pension, resorts to a straight lie. The charge repeated by John Major. They know we've set out plans that would guarantee it many years ahead and yet they repeat that charge again and again. It is a lie. But Labour weren't backing down, they hit back at the Tories. These are the despicable actions of desperate men abusing uh, and uh, uh, insulting Tony Blair. I think the Tories are staring defeat in the face. Morning, ladies and gentlemen. A smiling Tony Blair had earlier contrasted Labour's pledges with a list of what he said were Tory plans, repeating his claim that the Conservatives would abolish state pensions. The facts are that they want to replace the state pension with privately funded pensions. Now, they say that is just for young people today. But if you look carefully at the proposals that they've put out, they make it quite clear that older people can be brought into that scheme as well. Tonight in Edinburgh, Paddy Ashdown called for something special to counter Tory negative campaigning. It is time for a crusade. A crusade for the new century. A crusade for a new politics. A crusade for new opportunities for our people. But the mudslinging hasn't stopped. The Tories continuing to claim Mr Blair is a con man. Labour saying their arguments about the state pension are totally justified. And what's more, they'll be repeated at their press conference tomorrow. Hugh Pym, News at 10, Westminster. Away from the London news conferences and set-piece speeches, the party leaders all found time again today to get out and to meet the voters. This report from the Hustings is by our political correspondent, Jackie Ashley. John Major was in the driving seat today, though confessing his family don't often allow him there because they think Norma is the better driver. As he visited Jaguar's plant in Coventry, Mr Major had a wheeze for getting rid of the troublesome press. If you boys would just like to stand there, we'll start it. <laughs> But was he a salesman? Right, any sales here? <laughs> you can afford one. It was all designed to show the successes of British industry under his government. Tony Blair was pressing the flesh in a key marginal in the southeast, hoping he'd put those hostile exchanges with the Tories behind him. Thanks a lot for coming out. Good to see you. We had a bit of trouble with those Tories, but I think we managed them all right. Yeah. <laughs> But he had a bit of trouble with a heckler, too. You can 
and keep copying. Are you playing against any of these, Mr. Blair? Paddy Ashdown, ever keen to show his passion for education, was visiting another school and asking the question he constantly asks about the use of computers. How many hours a week on a computer would you have? He was impressed to see the computer room in this school. Oh, amazing. I look suitably startled. <laughs> and was keen to learn just how it was done himself. Jackie Ashley, News at 10. Tonight's other election news, a group of charities calling themselves the real world came together today to criticize the main political parties. They carried balloons because they said the election campaign has been full of hot air at the expense of a proper debate on real issues. Clyde Cummery said it would offer young people of Wales a new deal, better employment, education and housing opportunities. The party is also proposing a special youth ministry to give young people a voice in a Welsh parliament. And the man in the white hat and overalls was the Northern Ireland Secretary, Sir Patrick Mayhew, on a visit to a sweet factory today. He said it was an example of a firm flourishing in the current stable economic conditions. And now we have the second of our live interviews with the main party leaders. Tonight, it's the Labour leader, Tony Blair. He's with our political editor, Michael Brunson, at Westminster. Mr Blair, weren't you caught out today? You didn't say that there was perhaps a threat or a risk to the basic state pension, you said it is going to be abolished. And that is not true, is it? It certainly is true. That is the Conservative policy. Now, they say they're going to replace the state pension with private provision. And they say, and people should understand very clearly, this is the danger they should be warned of, they say, the Conservatives, that this will only apply to young people. But if you read the small print, they also say they'll try and bring in older people as the scheme progresses. And what is more, they have given no idea, whatever, as to how they're going to fund this private pension to replace the state pension. But you see, this is your view of their plans, isn't it? Oh, no, it? Michael, it's not. With all due respect, it is not my view. There is no doubt about these facts. One, that they intend to replace the state pension with private provision, provision for young people. Two, that young people will then lose their tax relief on pension contributions. Three, they can then bring in older people as and when they want to. Four, that that will have an enormous front-end cost, and they've never said where that cost is going to well, come look, from. Let me point to you here. I have it here. This is the Prime Minister's statement from Downing Street when he made this original announcement. The words, let me make clear that the state will continue to guarantee that everyone will receive at least their basic state pension uprated at least for inflation. Oh, yes, Michael, Are you saying that's a lie? That no, he's they're not saying going to they will it? guarantee yeah. right, yes. the private pension meets the basic state pension, but the basic state pension is to go, and they have given no indication well, of where the funding would come from in order to make good that guarantee. Their own costings indicate that the cost of this over the next few decades is £140 billion. They say that some of that will come from removing the tax relief on pension contributions, something in itself that I think a lot of people will find very worrying. And, you know, we went through all this with VAT on fuel before the last election when they made these denials. We went through all this when they denied their intentions towards the National Health Service. And people will remember the poll tax when we went through all this. And we were told this was merely an administrative change in local government. It ended up causing enormous misery and a £14 billion deal. Now, I am not letting the Tories away without proper scrutiny of their proposals for a fifth term. Well, look, on let's... tax, on health, on education, where there's grammar yep. school in every town is going to make secondary moderns of all the rest. We deserve to know the answers to all these right. questions. Well, now, let's go back to this, then, because this is another thing that has so angered Mr Major today. He says, you are quite wrong and you are telling a lie when you say that VAT will be put on food. I mean, I put it to you for a start that it seems to me that any government would be crazy to contemplate doing that, but we'll let that, we'll let that well, go. Michael, let Isn't it fair that the VAT on fuel went on for a very specific reason, a full year after he won the election, because there was a recession and because something had to be done about the huge public borrowing. This is not the actions of a man, and I may say deferred for uh, a year before it was come in. That's not the action of a man who willingly wanted to do it. The circumstances made him do it. Michael, never mind what he willingly wants or doesn't want. The facts are, the Conservative record is, that they promised in 1979, specifically they would not raise VAT. They raised it from 8 to 15%. 
Before the last election, we were accused of lies and scaremongering when we said they put VAT on fuel and power. They did it in the budget after the general election. And it is important that people realize exactly the threats they face from a conservative fifth term. Now, at the same time today, we have put forward our positive proposals. Our positive proposals on the National Health Service to rebuild it, on reducing class sizes for all five, six, and seven-year-olds, on our program through the windfall tax to get young people off benefit and into work. We've published proposals on small businesses, on how we encourage greater development of small enterprises in our country. But we've we put forward the positive, but we're not letting them away without a proper scrutiny of their record and what they would do if they were ever re-elected again. But what, you know, what you're really saying, isn't it, that here's the Tory manifesto, all right? You're really saying that's just a pack of lies, the whole thing, it's a whole invention, that you can't trust anything in there. Well, I don't say you can't trust anything in there, but I'd certainly say this, that if you look at their record, Michael, remember, at the last election, John Major said he cut taxes for people every year. He then raised them by the largest amount in peacetime history. But you history. know that circumstances change. You know that sometimes the country's doing well, sometimes it's not doing so well. Are you giving me an assurance that you wouldn't ever want to make those sorts of changes as things, as circumstances change? I do give you an assurance that I will only, only make promises that I can keep, which is precisely why we've made a limited set of promises yes, so those, that we can keep. Things. Can yes, you give a promise, for example, that you wouldn't put up national insurance contributions under any circumstances? Well, we have already said, Gordon Brown has been very clear, uh, that the policy to remove the ceiling on national insurance contributions is gone as a policy. Well, that's but the if ceiling, I can just take the rates. It, I know, but look, I'm not going to sit here and write a budget, but no, there is I nothing. Understand. The difference between the Labour and Conservatives is that there is nothing in our spending proposals that implies hidden taxes. Every spending proposal is properly costed. Wherever we say we're going to spend money, then we say exactly where it comes from. And one of the reasons why we've had to be so tough on spending is because we're inheriting a situation where the Conservatives have doubled national debt, another broken promise, and where we're going to spend in this country today under Conservative rule. We will spend next year just on interest payments on our national debt, more than we spend on law and order and transport put together. Now, we just are a, right to draw attention. Just a very quick last question as we draw this to a close. You, your slogan is, Britain deserves better. Is it really so terrible out there? Is Sedgefield, for example, such a terrible place that there haven't been some improvements there? Look, the very thing we're saying, Michael, is that we deserve better. Not that everything's wrong. There are great things about Britain. I love Britain. I think it's a great country. The British people are a great country. But we can do better than this. Better for our schools, for our hospital, for the crime in our streets, for the jobs and industry of our future. Not everything's wrong, but we can do better. Tony Blair, thank you very much. Back to you, Trevor.